We're alive. All right, fantastic. So, one thing we did, we realized that we didn't do last episode was we didn't do any introductions, so no one knows who the <laughs> hell we are. Um, I guess I'm gonna start things off. My name is Talks Too Much. Uh, I go by Talks on here. I I started Third Party Studios. We're this podcast to make sure that we could talk about everything basically nerd culture related, uh, modern or current events, um, and just our opinion on general pop culture topics. And with me are the Cody. Yeah, I'll pretty much just go by Cody, and uh, I just wanted to bullshit about uh, pop culture. And then we got Taylor, also known as Slim, and he is running the Lack of Skill series currently, with the uh, currently running the Dead Space playthrough. Uh, episode 1 is out, and I think Episode 2 will be out by the time this gets posted, too. Yeah, for sure. It's already done editing. I just got to kind of upload it and um, post it on the, the few things, so yeah, it's ready to go up so i'm gonna say that the the reaction to the first episode blew me away i mean the fact that we already had 95 views on it as of when this or as of the time of this recording was actually pretty cool i didn't expect to see that so uh yeah good job yeah right. i'm, I'm really excited for the second one because you've told me there's going to be a lot of improvements to it so that'll... yeah i've already looked at and there it's just you know after watching the first one i try to <laughs> tweak a few things and make corrections to what I didn't like about it. So hopefully now when I sit down and record three and four, there's progresses that way, but we'll see. I'm going to keep tweaking and working on it. So well, as long as you don't get worse, <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> no promise. <laughs> Slippery slope. Uh. <laughs> well, so, I mean, today I think we have to, I have a few things I want to get to today for sure, but um, to start off, I think the thing that's been in the news the most, if you're paying attention to pop culture, has been what's been going on with Henry Cavill. Um, for those of you listening who don't know, Henry Cavill has been uh, the most, probably one of the most popularly re- and well-received um, actors today from a fandom perspective. Um, he has been in all of the most recent Superman projects, with the exception of what's uh, the garbage posted on the CW. And he's uh, he's really well received and very liked among fandom uh, because he he pays he gives a lot of credit to the fans of franchises and get, and gives them a lot of leeway in uh, in making sure that their voices are heard. You can help me out here, and maybe if people don't exact know the whole story, why did he leave that acting role with Superman? I didn't uh, read. He didn't leave. He was fired. Oh, was he? Okay, because I know. James Gunn's taken over the DC uh, EU okay. and kind of wants to restart every, everything. But there's rumors going around that he's not going to get rid of Ezra Miller's Flash, which is kind of fucked up. So Taylor, what do you, do you know anything about Ezra Miller and what's going on? With no. Him? Okay. No. Uh, very simple version of this. Ezra Miller has been again. He's been Flash in some of the higher end movie projects of mm-hmm. the DC universe, including his role in uh, Batman versus. Su- no, I'm sorry. It was uh, Bat. Yeah, Batman vs Superman, well, the Injust, yeah. the the Justice, the Justice movie. League. I remember seeing those movies. Um, so and so and now he's has his own movie coming out. Ezra Miller is um, he's in the news for you know he's done a lot of pretty crappy things. Uh, it's alleged he's uh, a groomer. He basically who's... terrorized a Hawaiian town. <laughs> he terrorized a Hawaiian town. I think he got arrested really? like three times there. He's been arrested a bunch. He's that, put out a public... actor who plays Flash you're yeah. talking yeah. about. He put out a public apology saying <laughs> I'm saying effectively I'm sorry for like grooming these children. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's not a good guy. Um, you have and, to uh, keep him around. Huh? Well, yeah. he's, he's very clearly a they them. He's been very honest about that. I think the most recent article I read actually referred to him by his pronouns. So good for um, him. I'm going to keep insisting I call him a him uh, <laughs> just because I'm a dick that way. But so he's James Gunn comes into the DC universe. Warner Brothers reaches out, gets him on board, brings James Gunn into the DCU to basically reboot the franchise, start fresh, wipe the slate clean. Now, the audience is in love with Henry Cavill uh, for the most part because he's done a ridiculously good job doing Superman uh, Audio, like certain feedback aside from whether or not The Man of Steel was a great film, I loved it. Yeah, everyone likes uh, Henry Cavill as Superman. It's just the Snyder movies that they're not that big of a fan of. Well, and I am actually one thing I want to general population. Yeah, yeah, and I want to talk about Man of Steel a little bit more, but just to get through the the rough version of the story. Um, so Henry Cavill is 
fired by James Gunn, along with several projects that have been cut. Um, it sounds like uh, Gal Gadot is not coming back as Wonder Woman. It sounds like... Uh, and she killed it. She was awesome. She I was mean, Wonder awesome. Woman in 1984 was not... I didn't even see it. I didn't have any <laughs> interest bother. in seeing it. Um, did yeah, you, I just watched the first one. I didn't watch the 1944, but I heard it was good. That first one was awesome. I enjoyed the first one quite a bit. And I liked that yeah. they did a... I thought they did a good job staying pretty true, pretty accurate to the lore of uh, Wonder Woman. I mean, at least what's canonical in their story. Um, and I enjoy. I enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, but I do think that there was, I think that these superhero movies always can be nitpicked into oblivion and try to be improved upon. I don't think any, I don't know of the last superhero movie I, I wanted to give a standing ovation for. Um, but so James Gunn comes in, he's wiping the slate clean. Henry Cavill is let go. Um, the rock this week, Dwayne, the rock Johnson apparently finally admitted that the <laughs> black, adam. black adam was a failure uh. in theaters which i i i had black adam was a, a popcorn film for me it was uh, it was not i i wouldn't call it a good movie but it was in, enjoyable i i had fun watching it you know i yes. good things i never get to go to see it it's not like i'd spend too much time going to movie theaters but it was dumb but yeah i mean compared to marvel movies it was all right <laughs> yeah, you could you could play hopscotch with how low that bar is, but um, but uh, so James Gunn comes in and apparently it's not confirmed that Ezra Miller's back as of right now. I don't not think confirmed. I think the, it's still a rumor. The statements that are being made is that he has not been hard rejected by Warner Brothers. Well, I think uh, it'd be dumb to fire Ezra Miller right now before his Flash movie comes out. Well, because then it'd be like, well, what's the point of seeing the Flash movie if we are? If this know is that? the last one he's gonna be yeah. in, I, I, I agree entirely. To Warner Brothers credit, that is something they needed to, they needed to consider. Is that they are broke. Warner Brothers has, I don't oh, think they're Warner, in debt. They're yeah, like a couple bill in debt or something. Yeah, Warner Brothers. If, I mean, honestly, you look at the Flash movie, it's not gonna make money. The people who you're going to have Flash loyalists who will watch anything with Flash on it, and I'm not docking them. That's their prerogative. I think they should. Um, you have people like me who don't really care about the Flash but care about these big franchises and want to see certain ones succeed, certain ones fail. Ezra Miller is not an actor I'm going to watch. I'm not going to watch him. I'm not going to support him. I don't like his, I don't like his take on things. I don't like um, how he behaves out in public. I don't like how his, uh, I don't like his criminal rap sheet that he's got, and it's, it's ever-growing. Um, I, and I don't like what DC is. I don't like how they're starting off 2023. They're keeping the Flash movie when they've scrapped other failing projects like Batgirl. Um, I mean, they've scrapped failing projects before. They've done it yeah. before. They could do it again. They need this money. I don't fault them for that. But I don't know who's going to go see this. Yeah, I don't know. Well, if it's already done, what money are they losing and just throwing it out there and trying to rake some of some marketing back in I I mean, in uh bad will with the uh consumer yeah. base marketing you throw in a trash movie they're not likely to come during that come back at another well, time and especially because james gunn will have to accept that this the flash movie is now it's under his belt whether he wants it or not it's under his belt well it could be like uh say like Marvel's got their phases. This could be like an end of a DC phase. Flash is just like the last movie. Yep. Or they might just use it to catapult the next, well, the rebirth of the franchise. And I'm not trying to segue, but I mean, we, you know, uh, Cody, you know that the new Joker movie apparently is going to be a musical, like the Joker sequel. Is that true? Is that uh, rumor or true? That's what I've heard. I don't know if it's confirmed or not. <laughs> Let me see if I can pull something up. Uh, see if it's under any current project. That's horrible. been the rumor for like a couple of years now, so I'm going to assume it's true. <laughs> I'm going to assume the worst. Joker, is it this one? Uh, flu, flu, no, de no. flu, uh, do it. Sure. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's a little sequel. Joaquin the, Phoenix, isn't it? It's yeah, a sequel. It is the sequel. It. I mean, I really, that title makes me a little nervous. <laughs> Yeah, be, what the hell is that? I don't know what flu de loo means. <laughs> flu de loo. Okay, so we got uh, Sophie du Demond. Wasn't that his like love interest, quote unquote, in the first one? I don't think so. I think so. Who is Zazie? Yeah, Zazie Beats. Oh Zazie no 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 no! She's Domino in uh, 
in Deadpool scene, in the Deadpool movie. Yeah, but she's also the love interest in Joker. Right, right, right. Okay, so we got her. That I mean, I like her. I don't have any. I, I don't have any problem with her. Um, then you have Brendan Gleeson. I like him a lot. He wasn't in the uh, original Joker, was he? No. Uh, is he directing this or producing it, or is he act- acting in it? Is he a? Ah, uh, it's hard to know. It's not obvious oh, here yet, know. and it's still uh, it's still a ways out. They must yeah. still be in filming. He's um, probably a director, you know. Yeah. Maybe even act. You know, directors still act in their movies. So. <clears throat> so, back to uh, Hen- back to Henry Cavill's stuff. Um. You have James Gunn who's taken over the seat, and he's gonna have the Flash under his belt. It could be the end of the fa- of, of the last phase of existing Warner Brothers DC. They're not going to have very much money in their pockets. They're going to have to go deeper in debt if they want to produce something meaningful. You have a Joker film, a Joker sequel that's announced that's not for any Joker fans. It is a musical, and it's got Lady Gaga in it. Who is this for? (laughs) It's not for me. I'm not going to go see this with my family. I'm not going to go see this with my brother. I'm not going to see it with you guys. Even if you guys want to go, I'm going to say you're fucking retarded. I'm not going. I'm good. Who Who is this for? There's no Joker fans. I mean, first off, Joker does not have a fan base on its own, on his own, as a character. He's always the antithesis to Batman. The Joaquin Phoenix movie was a a flash in the bottle. It was an isol. It was a isolated movie. I think. I think it was a good drama with an interesting character base. I thought it was well executed. I like Joaquin Phoenix in it. Um, I don't have any problem with it. This new Joker movie that's going to be a musical. Musicals suck. They suck. <laughs> Who are they for? I hate them. You're, I mean, I, I I don't think it's a stretch here to think that most audience members who go to musicals are women. And I don't know if any women care about Joker. I don't know of any. Maybe there are some. I don't know. There's probably some. <laughs> well, Lady Gaga's uh, probably playing Harley Quinn. She is. I saw it. Yeah. That's what she was listed as. That is... Honestly, the dynamic the dynamic between Lady Gaga and Joaquin Phoenix would be an interesting premise for a movie, but it, a musical is yeah. not. There's I don't know if anyone's even willing to give this movie a shot, even if it is a a marketed as the sequel to The Joker. I'm like, well then I guess this story's dead. Well, <laughs> DOA. At, least, at least the first one was pretty self-contained, so you can just be like, we had that one. Good. Yeah. I think Joaquin Phoenix, when you compare Joaquin Phoenix to, like, uh, Mark Hamill, Jack Nicholson, um... Mark. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the other Jokers who have existed, uh, Heath Ledger. I mean, Joaquin Phoenix could have a... There could be Joker movies. And I think they would be fun and interesting if you watch the movies from the perspective of the villain. Who yeah. is this kind of, like, victimized by society character. You know? Sympathetic. Sympathetic. That that premise isn't bad. It's a it's a workable, interesting premise, and obviously, if executed properly, can make a buttload of money. But it's uh, frustrating. Like a Joker did it make a bill? I thought it made a billion. I'm pretty sure it made a bill. Yeah, I can't remember, but I could see honestly a lot of people seeing those names <clears throat> in there, seeing the previous success. Oh, I, that movie was good. This one could be good. Yeah. It doing well, but not for the reasons we think. Maybe the low ratings, but it get, making a lot of money, and then it could unfortunately make another sequel because they saw there was money in it, right? And it just get worse. How many people worse. do you think it'll be? Five people, ten people, a hundred people, a thousand, a million? How many people are gonna go buy a ticket, sit down to this movie, realize it's a musical twenty minutes in, and fucking <laughs> oh. hate their decision? Yeah, I wonder if they'll advertise this. As a musical. Well, you know, they're probably going to do kind of what they did with, I guess, I don't remember the marketing for the first one, but there was definitely those couple of scenes with the guy down the steps, wasn't there? Wasn't that a scene? I can't remember in the trailer. Well, I mean, there's music and dancing. Well, it? exactly, <laughs> but maybe they're like, oh, it's just like the first one. This guy is just... Well, and to your point, Taylor, I think uh, the important thing to realize is that that staircase scene is an iconic scene. Exactly. It's him doing the step toes down the stairs. That's it, a tourist destination now. It's a tourist it destination. Is. And that's yeah. what I'm getting at. Maybe like, oh, it's not a musical. It's just another a scene they're trying to promote because of the first one. Well, that marketing worked. For, whatever they did for marketing, it I don't works. remember a lot of it. It worked. There's no argument that the Joker was a success. But 
I wonder how many normies are going to go to the theaters thinking they're going to see a sequel to the Joker movie that made a billion dollars, and they're going to sit down, they're going to realize it's a musical, and hate the next three hours of their life. Because... (laughs) Could you imagine if it was three hours? I know. (laughs) They're going to be an hour in. They're going to be an hour in. This is like the sixth song. What what kind of movie is this? this Every line is being sung. I I hate it. I don't get it. Maybe if you go go to the theater wasted, you might enjoy it. (laughs) Probably really good. Do you think they're... I mean... There, there's. I don't think there's anything to this, but do you think they're trying to get people to go to the movies high? Because <laughs> Avatar Two just came out, and last week you made the point that you would enjoy Avatar much more if it, if if a person were stoned, you'd enjoy it your mind, way you know. more. And now you got a musical, which people will literally have to be intoxicated to even tolerate. <laughs> I, I'm I'm beating it up before it's even given a chance, but I don't see any reason. I don't see any faith here in this in this film. I don't see any reason to have good faith in this no. attempt. So, when it comes to the DCU, what do you guys want from the DCU? Like, let's assume that the DCU will happen, money will be made, films will continue to come out. What do you guys even want from it? Well, the thing is, Marvel already set the template with Phase 1. That's how you do it. You introduce your heroes one movie at a time. One movie at the yep. Instead of... What instead of what uh, DC tried to do with just throwing them all in a movie at once and hoping it works? Yeah, I don't see, I don't understand how these executives wa- look at the success of Marvel and understand that it was done over the course of ten years. And then they try to rush it. And they try to rush it. Yeah. I mean, what, a- was it a cash grab? Because I can't imagine you took Henry Cavill, Gal Gadot, Jason Momoa, Brett, uh, Ben Affleck. And you put them all into a movie and been like, we can afford this. Yeah. We don't make a ton of money. It was honestly the uh, the earliest movies from the DCU when they got started. J- Batman vs. Superman and Justice League. I hated them both. I hated them <clears throat> with a fiery passion that consumed my soul. Well, okay, st- well, start at the beginning with Man of Steel. Good, you said good, Martha. Good, good uh, single hero <laughs> movie introducing Superman. It was an uh, easy plot. Probably going up against Zod in the first movies might have been a mistake. I think that's fair. But it was a solid movie. I, re- I really liked it. Can I say? Can I throw one point into, not to derail you, because oh, no, you're, right. you're going to go into a point I can tell, but it, with The Man of Steel, one thing I loved about that movie, specifically that movie, so much was that you saw Superman failing. Superman is a character who across almost all canon like, he just barely gets hurt ever. He's the guy who shows up and just wins. I mean, you have Kryptonite, which is his only real weakness, but in Man versus in Man of Steel, you saw him in the city against the terraformers mm. uh, trying to rip the, those apart. You saw him being beaten. You saw the city being destroyed. You assumed that a lot of people were dying, and so, you know, him as a character... <laughs> Well, you needed that in I the Superman assume, movie. I would assume, like, the whole sure. fucking city went down. It, in the, uh, and then it's super- rebuilt again in the next movie. In the original, in the older Superman movies, you know, you don't really see anyone lose. Like, Superman doesn't really lose. He's kind of just Superman, and he kind of just wins. I never watched the uh, Christopher Reeves ones. Okay. So the, the Man of Steel, I think, the reason I like Man of Steel so much is because you have, I think he fixed Superman. He put character flaw into a flawless character. Which was something I really liked. His character flaw was he wanted to he yeah, he didn't know where he belonged. He was discovering himself, and he was losing. He lost against Zod, I think, four times, three three times. He was losing against the other Kryptonians before he finally overcame it at the end with when he defeated the Terraformers and killed Zod. Mm. It finally won. And I, I mean, I I took you away from your point. Victory. But I just wanted to say oh, I that... I don't make points, I just talk. <laughs> Why don't you talk then, stinky? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, they started out fine, and then the next movie, they're going Batman versus Superman immediately, without introducing Batman at all. Yeah. And I think it was just a mistake. Ben Affleck should have had his own movie, maybe a couple movies, and same with Superman, and then they go up against each other. But no, right from the get-go... It's Batman's this bad guy. It's been no, not bad guy, but he's an intimidating. What's the word for it? vigilante? Yep. It's been doing the job for like twenty years already. No. Well, and then you have a. Uh... I would like to have seen, not the origin origin of Batman, because we're sick of seeing his parents get killed. <laughs> Again. 
Martha. Again. But like the Batman, I think like starting a year or two into his career. Well, the timing. What well, I think the timing would have been a big issue then because Man of Steel was the start of the DCU from Zack, si- Zack Snyder's projects at mm-hmm. least. Now you want to get a Batman versus Superman. I think the only thing in Batman versus Superman that was actually really good was was really awesome was when they had Bruce Wayne fl- like running through the streets in his car oh, and the battle was happening and you actually had a reason for Batman to distrust Superman. It's like all this chaos, he puts it on him. I, that actually made a lot of sense to me. I really liked it. I thought it was a good character motivation. I thought Batman going up against Superman was a, uh, like, uh, a, was just a mountain to climb for him and I thought that was good. You, you can't really make that timing work if you do a Batman after Superman because you need to pretty much do an isolated Batman movie, then Man of Steel then Batman versus Superman with that character. If you're going to use yeah, that motivation, which I think do like, like, a, like, like a man, you have Man of Steel and then the Batman movie after that, which could be like a, almost like a prequel to the DCU. Mm-hmm. And then like a movie or two time jump into Superman comes to earth. Yeah. I think it, I think it would be a little difficult timing wise to make that work unless you plan on releasing them one year, then one year. Unless you plan on releasing, yeah, it'd have to be a bat- planned out thing. Yeah, for sure. Just flying by the seat of your pants. But if I'm not mistaken, uh, if I'm not mistaken, you had Man of Steel come out right as the Dark Knight trilogy was finishing up. Yeah, uh, oh. Dark Knight Rises was 2012. Man of Steel Missing. came out 2013. Yeah, so you couldn't really put a Batman movie in mm. front of Man of Steel. No, you couldn't have. You couldn't yeah, really that'd make be that work. Weird, I guess. Yeah, you have multiple <laughs> Batman movies. It's it'd be like 2022. <laughs> like 2022, where you just yeah. drop it. Batman movie, Batman movie, Batman movie. Are are we fatigued of Batman at this point? Nope, because I loved the Batman. You the Batman, mm-hmm. Robert Pattinson. Yeah, it was I, a great movie. And everyone bitches about the last act because it's basically four acts. I enjoyed it. I think the all the way through. I think the last act and the first act were. The high, I think those were the best. I think the build in the middle was a little... The I had, drag on a little bit. A little drag on, yeah. But I like that you had a recluse Bruce Wayne in uh, Robert Pattinson. I thought he did great. I think... Emo Batman. Emo Batman was is probably <laughs> more appropriate. I mean, I Probably. Honestly, you, you, you see Batman go to these parties, and he's the freaking Hulk. In almost every, in almost every project yeah. he's in, except for like the serious dramas. Mm. And I mean, I'm kind of sick of seeing billionaire playboy philanthropist that's ripped, and people just don't get that he's got the billions and trillions of dollars to spend on all this stuff. And uh, is Batman? I wonder who Batman is. It, <laughs> it's kind of like how Clark Kent's excuses were always weak. It's like, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. It's like, oh wait, did you just miss Superman for the hundredth and fiftieth time? <laughs> And you guys are within a proximity of one block from each other again. <laughs> how come you're always disappearing when there's a tragedy? Because well, that's how tragedies work. You're supposed to run away. Where do you go? Because <laughs> it makes sense that you would run away. Yeah, I think they're going to do that more uh, Playboy thing, though, in the next The Batman. <laughs> I think Robert the Batman Pattinson... Because he, uh, at the end of the movie, he gets more hope and he's not so... <clears throat> right. And he's... Grim. Man, I do think... I think The Batman, Robert Pattinson's Batman, was amazing. And I, I really liked that it broke people out of a funk for Robert Pattinson. Because Robert mm. Pattinson had a stigma stitched into his skin. Like, he had a brand from the Twilight series. He was not going to be able to shake What's off. That? I've never heard of it. Uh, me neither, but okay. I just... <laughs> but it yeah, mean, no, he's been in a lot of good stuff since then, but it's mostly been independent stuff, so yeah. no, not a whole lot of people have seen him. But, Any, yeah, he's a great actor. I think anyone who went and saw the, the Batman and gave Robert Pattinson and a he reasonable fucking hates shot. Twilight. <laughs> I, 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 he's not alone. He's, <laughs> him and everyone else above the age of fourteen at the time it came out. <laughs> god, that was annoying in high school. Oh my gosh, that was a rough. I mean, Twilight backpacks and crap was just so annoying. But uh, I think Robert Pattinson would make him. I think Robert Pattinson would be great to keep in the DCU as a Batman character. I mean, maybe I think they're gonna run like two diff. Two concurrent DCEUs. So you're really? going to do James Gunn and then whatever they're doing with the That's Batman. That's a horrible idea. You think so too? I, I agree horrible. with you. I think... Well, right people now... People get confused enough as it is. Well, I don't... Because uh, right now, James Gunn's uh, EU is just in the... Uh, just in the talks right now. There's no production, nothing. Well, the Batman 2, I think, is already in production. 
So we're gonna have a couple of those, and then James Gunn Universe might start. So maybe they'll just miss each other. But it's still too close. It's people are gonna get confused. They're gonna be like, "Didn't we just watch the something with the? De- well, how is this happening? Wasn't this just happening?" Do you think people thought Black Adam was a Marvel movie? <laughs> no reason <laughs> stuff because it's like there's no real indication that. Well, you had a. Uh, I mean. There's a lot of Marvel fans who are not smart. I'm just gonna throw that out there. Be honest with. I'm gonna be honest with all of you guys listening. There's a lot of Marvel fans that are not smart. They don't. I mean, there's. A, I think yeah. There's probably something to that. Hawkman and uh, Miss uh, Doctor Fate, and the other two heroes. Uh, Captain Adam, I think is. I, I don't remember what the name of the the guy who write like gets big is. Do you remember? The kid, the kid who got... Who, uh, Adam Smasher? Adam Smasher. Okay, because Captain Adam's an entirely different character and is actually an important character in the DC universe, but... What sucks is they brought in Dr. Fate and they had a good casting choice with Brosnan as him, and then they kill him off, so there's no he more... He was awesome. No more my, chance for a Dr. Fate movie. My only issue with Dr. Fate was... Well, now they got the new universe, so... My, my only issue with Dr. Hey, Fate... Hey, come back now. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I wish that Dr. Fate... Uh, they were true to Dr. Fate with the, the helmet... Possessing of, him possessing him mm-hmm. which made way more sense to me you took off his the helmet was taken off way too much and there was an iron there was very much iron man moments from dr fate where you actually saw inside the helmet oh the hyper close-up with the magic happening around it versus like the science which happening you don't around need. it you didn't need it it definitely it made didn't. it fun with iron man because he's got all this tech stuff but we don't know anything about the magical capabilities. Exactly. Of the you made a point. Do you think Marvel characters thought this was a Marvel movie? Marvel. Yeah. I think Dwayne the Rock Johnson makes way more sense in a Marvel universe than he does in a DC universe. Well, the DC universe is darker, and it's not our universe. Like Marvel takes place in our universe. Yeah. And so it should be very easy to distinguish between the two. But now. All the mo- Marvel became so big that every movie pretty much just runs the same algorithm that <clears throat> Marvel does, and it all just feels samey. Did you guys ever answer the original question, which was, what do you guys want from a DC universe? Oh no, we never really discussed that. I don't think. No, I pretty just want, pretty much just want DC. I want it to be a little darker, and a little bit. Uh, well, just like. It's not part of our universe, so just keep it out of like making it look too much like our world. Taylor, what do you I, think? I think they need to take a break for five years, not <laughs> make a thing, and they're like, "We're starting over." First movie. That's what Marvel needs. To do. We got. They need to. <laughs> no, I agree. And just restart the whole thing. They there's too many shows. There's. there's Oh my goodness! There's like 22 there's, Marvel things that came there's out this last shows, year. There's movies. No, they gotta they gotta <clears throat> slow slow down and stop too. But just for not because I don't want to see them or I think they're getting too close or convoluted. It's Losing too its much magic. going on right now, and no one knows exactly who wants to take the reins. Take the reins, and this is what we're doing. This is the end project. Here's the first movie. We got to get to the end project, but let's focus on this and take it step by step. I think that that's a really good idea, and honestly, I think that I think the superhero movies. This gets into. I want to come back to Henry Cavill because we're not we haven't talked about the Warhammer stuff yet, and I want to come back to Henry Cavill. But maybe this is a good time to segue because we've been talking about Batman and Superman for a while. Um, The superhero genre has been oversaturated. Yes, and a while ago you had the western genre was oversaturated and that died out hard for a while you know i remember growing up all the people who in my family i have a lot of family members who love westerns but they all brought their dvd case with them and were just watching westerns they had watched seven times before there was nothing new there was no new westerns in theaters that i remember 310 to yuma um children of men uh children of men that ain't a western what's the one with the guy with the bowl cut the guy had the bowl coat. He was like talking like this. Oh, no country for old men. No, co- uh, that there we go. I, I, I but that's not really. It's not like a no, but eighteen hundreds western. But. No, but these are like examples of movies that came out that kind of were equated with me to what westerns were. That's what I envisioned a western as mm. because I watch. I know that John Wayne is the western, uh, the western icon. Yeah. And then you have uh, Clint Eastwood. Clint Eastwood, Clint Eastwood is. But I mean, another huge figure in that. You have good dramas coming out, but you don't have 
I mean, West. I don't know where the Western stories went, and I assume it was just because of oversaturation. Yeah, probably exactly what it is. Now that we've hit the same... I feel like we've hit a point with superhero movies where I am done watching superhero movies for the most part. Superhero genre has been going strong for 20-some years now. Mm -hmm. Basically starting out with X-Men in, like, 2000? Yeah, it's around that. Yeah, And then you got the Sam Raimi trilogy, Spider-Man after that, and then just X-Men movies, X-Men movies... And then Marvel comes up, and then it's one or two movies every year since then, in 2008. And it's been progressively more and more, and all how many TV shows, movies, DC's throwing it in there, like we've talked about. Everyone's throwing their hat in the ring because they saw how much Marvel's making. Why not? But you know? I don't know if I have the superhero fatigue, though, because if it's a good movie, I'm still going to go out and see it. It's just every movie's so mediocre now. Well, I think I think it's safe to assume, assume being the operative word there, that Hollywood has decided they are done making superhero films that fans like. They have decided that they are going to make whatever nonsense they want, slap a superhero title to it, and that is what they want to do. I think we can all agree that Hollywood has made that decision that they're done making superhero movies that fans want. I mean, yeah, the only ones I've been really enjoying is the Spider-Man with Tom Holland. I think he's the only one. Well, that I bro- enjoy going to. I think that one broke the mold beyond all superhero films because it was. I mean, Cody, Cody, you made the point. Twenty years of twenty twenty five years of superhero films. Mm-hmm. Sam Raimi's Spider Man started it off. Uh, well, not started it off, but you had the X Men. Then it's then that came in. This was the culmination of twenty five years of Spider Man coming sure. to a head, and it definitely broke the mold both in dollars and in I think audience feedback. I think that. Endgame had some neg- Endgame had some negative criticism applied to it, even though it was such a ridiculously well received movie. Mm-hmm. Infinity War is and I is an amazing movie, and I think most people agree that that movie was really good. And it needed that sad ending to kind of show people that the, there's some consequences in the in the Marvel universe. But I mean, yeah. I think <laughs> <laughs> there were consequences in the there Marvel were. universe. There was consequences for a year. There was consequences, for a year. and then everything got. It's fine now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We lost one superhero in the entirety of it, which was Iron Man. <laughs> God bless uh, Robert Downey Jr. for getting out of the MCU, though. I hope he never comes back. And oh, that's they will. not a dig on him. He needs to just make good, good stuff again. He needs make good stuff. I've seen he's world. going to make like cameos, as in like AI oh, yes. programs oh, yeah. of like. Oh, kind of like he was at his funeral. He's like, oh, blah, blah, blah. CGI? CG, not CGI, but it's going to be him, but it's going to be like a hologram of him because oh he's my dead. Gosh. He reco- you're thinking he recorded he re- a bunch of it's holograms a- of himself while he was alive? That's what I've heard he and I've it, seen. I, I don't know if it's true. He made an AI but... of himself that just comes up. Oh, And I've heard that too. He's like, he's going to be Jarvis. He's going to be an AI talking. That would act. I, so he's just going to be a, a voice actor here's my thought. as Jarvis. I have no animosity towards that idea at all. No. I don't want Robert Downey back. I, I like want, a live uh, no. Iron Man. No, I, mean, I don't either. But I, I do wonder what. I don't know what I want from the, from the MCU. What I want is for them just to get back to the hero's journey. As For a, sure, as a storyline, they've lost that. They, I want them to stop doing crossovers between characters that have never been introduced and characters that are iconic and already cared about. I want them to stop doing bait and switch. I want them to take the heroes that actually could lead the MCU and focus on them. I, uh, when I saw the uh, the female, yeah, bring in the Fantastic Four. Yeah, that's what I want. Just you, stop what you're doing now. <laughs> Bring in the Fantastic Four and then start a universe off of that. What I want from Marvel, what I want from Sony, Marvel, and all the other projects that on the Marvel side of the of the world, I want a DPU. I want a Deadpool universe. <laughs> I want Deadpool I was versus thinking something else. I want De- yeah, I know you were <laughs> sneaky, sneaky man. I want Deadpool versus Spider Man. I want Deadpool versus Hulk. I want Deadpool versus Thor. I want Deadpool. You want Deadpool to kill the Marvel Universe. I want Deadpool to annihilate the Marvel Universe. I want Deadpool to be what he is. The Ryan Reynolds, beautifully built, (laughs) beautifully put together, like action icon character of the Marvel Universe. I want him in there. I want him up against uh, Hugh Jackman in this movie. That's oh, I can't wait. It. I don't. I didn't want Hugh Jackman back. Just I, Logan was his last Wolverine movie. It was good. Just leave it at that. I want. Here's what I want. For, I I agree with you. Hugh Jackman, 
is done in my in my opinion. I don't want Hugh Jackman back in the MCU. I just want him to help revitalize Deadpool because Deadpool one stood apart. Deadpool one was uh, it was amazing. It was a, a a project out of love. Well, yeah, no one's no one's seen a superhero movie quite like that, so that's why it was so big. Right. The mm-hmm. second one was just wasn't that much of a surprise. So. Exactly. Now I want a Deadpool 3 so that we can see Deadpool grow into the character he's supposed to be. I want Deadpool movies as often as Spider-Man movies. And I want Deadpool, Venom, Spider-Man to be battling it out like they should be. Yeah. That's what I want to see, too. Because Deadpool is one of the greatest anti-heroes ever created. And Deadpool is one of the few characters in the MCU that is aware that he is a comic book character. Yeah. He is a... No. She-Hulk. She, yeah, I don't count her. <laughs> Deadpool could kill She-Hulk, and that would be good. I would actually have watched that show if, at the very last episode, Dead like Ryan Reynolds made an appearance and killed uh, She-Hulk. That would have been a great show. I would have watched the whole thing just to watch that. Just end to of watch it. that five seconds at the end. <laughs> yep. Slash. Worth it. <laughs> also, it's ten um, hours I'll never get back, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, genre fatigue, Cody. You don't think it's there? I mean, for me personally, no. Um. Do you think- For Marvel, it is. I'm not gonna watch. I haven't watched anything Marvel since No Way Home. I went to see Thor: Love and Thunder, and it was the dumpster fire I assumed it was going to be. <laughs> it's exactly I, what they promised you. <laughs> well, I gave it. A, I I gave it some praise. Thor: Love and Thunder had awesome visuals. I thought. I mean, some of the CGI was absolute crap, but the visuals I thought were awesome. The acting from Christian Bale I thought was great, even if he didn't. Even if that really wasn't canonically care. Uh, uh, I, even if it didn't match up with Gore the God Slayer um, in the comic book lore, I, I thought he did a really good job acting it. And I laughed. I laughed a lot. And I enjoyed laughing. And that's those were the only... <laughs> and I enjoyed laughing. And I mean, I laughed at Who a lot of doesn't? things I think that they didn't want me to laugh at. So it's like, <laughs> they gave me a little more laughs than I think they planned on doing. But it was definitely a uh, enjoyable... I enjoyed it for those reasons, but it was a, it was a five... That movie was a five, a six, and I think uh, Chris. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, is it Chris Hemsworth? Who's the uh, Who's Thor? It's yeah, Chris Hemsworth. Hemsworth yeah. yeah, I think he made. Uh, He's he, done with it. Yeah, he said he was over with it. He said it would have to change fundamentally in order for him to get back into mm-hmm. wanting to be Thor again. Which, this is what I mean about fatigue. I'm like, uh, the audience. It's over, okay. I have overly goofy fatigue. Yeah, I'm done with it. Yeah. You need some serious story again back in the Marvel. Marvel is Marvel movies are just Disney films now. You know? They're yeah, just goofy. It is. And they're just goofy. They're, yeah. I mean, you could take... I mean, you could have a rated R Marvel movie that is actually clean enough for you to take your kid to. <laughs> <laughs> you could actually do that these days. Yeah, and they're going to destroy Deadpool with the PG-13 movie. It's PG-13? I am, I'm assuming so. so. Okay. I, I, thought, I think Disney has, like, a law <laughs> that says that they can't. <laughs> Make radar, and they don't. I show thought they blood. made an exception for the first one. Is that not just going to continue? I haven't been on? paying that close attention. I thought they're like, oh, this is the first ever. Deadpool three. Do doesn't say anything. Well, I don't think because they don't want us to know. Have they even started filming? Uh, I would assume so. They've had to. I mean, they announced next year. Plot summary, synopsis, action, content. Parental guide. Parental guide. Where? Nah, it just says ad content. Uh, so it doesn't look like we don't know. Release. They got a release date. Untitled Deadpool movie. They're filming in Vancouver. That's pretty far out still. We could go visit them. They're close enough. We can go visit them. They're in Canada. It's almost two years out. Yeah, we can. So it's they're probably still in filming. Oh, for sure. But it's, so for Deadpool, I I hope it's rated R. It honestly needs to be. It's the only way to do Deadpool properly. Yeah. Hugh Jackman, I think I think Hugh Jackman could make this movie a success with Ryan Reynolds. I I like their chemistry together. I think it'll play really well. Um, I want Deadpool to be more in the Marvel universe. I definitely want Deadpool to be more than the X Men. I don't... I, I want a rebranding of the X-Men. Now that Fox... Well, Disney owns Fox, but Fox doesn't have the rights to them anymore. Disney yeah. has... or Yeah, Disney Marvel has the rights to the X-Men. I want a revamp of the X-Men. Yeah, no, I agree. I think 
you talking about you want to start from like kind of scratch yep. from the ground up yeah no i agree with that yeah it's it'd be just nice to see those movies and how they would depict them nowadays i think um so i think that the deadpool and every and everything that's going on with those movies i think will take its time it will take time to figure out what the audience ge- generally across the board a larger scope will want Myself, I want MCU. I like what Taylor said to calm down, slow down, stop making goofy garbage. I, I guess I don't really want the X Men in the Marvel universe. I don't want to see Cyclops interacting with uh, Doctor Strange. I don't want to well, see. Well, that's why. Yeah, just cuts. Just cut the universe as it is right now. Just stop it. Do Fantastic Four. New X Men. Yeah, I You're think. You can keep your fucking precious Deadpool. I, yeah. <laughs> well, do um is Tom Holland confirmed for any additional Spider-Man movies? Uh, well, from I think the he's money he's bringing in, I'd be surprised. Three coming out. Another three? Holy smokes! That's what I heard after No Way Home, but that's a lot. Unconfirmed because they basically made uh, No Way Home is the end of Tom Holland's. Well, it's the longest origin story. <laughs> Oh my yeah, gosh! Four yeah. movies. You have- he's got like four or five movies as Spider-Man, and then now at the end of No Way Home, he's like finally Spider-Man and not Spider-Boy. Yeah, there is a uh, untitled Spider-Man sequel t- next year, 2024. There's no way. Home. Plot is under wraps. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Uh, I think Tom Holland will be one actor who will lead the future of yes. of movies. Because people trust him as an actor to have decent content. He, they trust him as... they. I mean, they trust him as a character. They, he's young enough that he can... I mean, he's young enough that he can be in so much going forward. Dude, he's going to look 20 years old when he's 50. Yeah. <laughs> he will. He looks because like how, how old is he right now? I think he's like 25, 26. He's young. Uh... I don't know if there's a biography. 96, he was born in. <clears throat> That's, uh, yeah, he's 20, uh, 26. 26. 26. Jeez. 25, 26. He could be my son. No. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> I'm three years older than him. I look like I'm 15 years older than him. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're also not in Hollywood. You know yeah. what you're doing to your face. So I, I'm excited for Tom Holland's future as an actor. I'm excited for Robert Pattinson's future because I think he did break his own... St- I, I think he broke through his own stigma on and what was holding him back with the Twilight series. I think people will look at him now and see him as a legitimate acting option. So Robert Pattinson I'm excited for. Tom Holland I'm excited for. I'm glad that some of these A-list actors from the MCU are breaking away from Disney. Right. And, and I'm, I'm glad to see they're going to other projects. The only thing I'm looking forward to coming out of Marvel is Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Why uh, Why are you excited for that one? Well, because the first two are good. And I don't think it's going to have a lot of other uh, uh, MCU stuff in it. I think it's just going to be, be a an Guardians. isolated little... Yeah, I think it's just going to be a Guardians movie. Am I misunderstanding that James Gunn is... Yeah, it's He's his, still the director for this? Yeah, it's his last uh, outing in a Marvel movie. Oh, okay. Because my understanding... this has been... In production or whatever for a while. Right, but my understanding of Disney is that their contracts are exclusives. So you cannot work for another studio or another pro- project while you are partnered with Disney. So his contract with Disney must be done, and this this movie must be finished. I would assume so. What's oh, release? yeah, it's coming out this year. Yeah, what's its release date? June? Looking for... Yeah, I'm looking for it, but I'm not finding it yet. Um, farther up May, May 5th. May 5th, okay. I'm okay. so much better at this than you are. Yeah, you are you should be running this. I'm bad at this. <laughs> I you, literally just Googled it. You should be <laughs> running the pilot seat. It's right there. Post-production. Expected May 5th. Yeah. Should Look right around the, the page a little bit, Would dude. you guys quit bullying me? I Let's am... Bullying them more. Bully, <laughs> bully me in the chat. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Join in. It's fun. So, this is a good way to talk about upcoming movies. Mm. Anything you guys are excited to see? Yes. Dune two, oh, that yeah, that'll be good. Taylor, did you see the first one? Um, I never saw the first one, but I've seen like, isn't there a TV show of Dune? Yeah, From like two thousand five. Uh, yeah, I've seen those. Oh. Is that? I don't know. That's the... with uh, what's his face? That uh, ah, he plays um, Xavier in the new X Men. Yeah, James, James McAvoy. 
I haven't yep. seen the show. I don't. I guess I didn't know there was a show yet. I haven't seen it either. I'm more of a big budget kind of guy, and it looks a little cheap to me. <laughs> it is. It is, for sure. Uh, it's really hard for me if it's if it is a cheap budget movie. It's really hard for me to get into shows like Doctor Who or. Yeah, I tried. I mean, even the even the Sherlock show with Benedict Cumberbatch. Yep, I've seen like a a season of that, and then I've seen a season or two of Doctor Who, and I never got super into it. But I'm like, I see the appeal, but I never was like, oh, this is the well, show. People are what people are talking about. You know, I should I, mean? I should clarify two things. I love Sherlock. But my issue with it was the mountain to climb over the fact that the production was so low. Sherlock Holmes is a character that you don't need a high budget in order to pull off. For sure. Yeah, I didn't have that problem watching it. And then, but Doctor Who, the the guy who plays um, the main character, is it Matt something? What's what's the actor? There's been like 13 different yeah. doctors. You know which one I'm referring to, though. Matt he was Smith. In, Matt Smith, yeah. yeah. Um, I haven't watched this season. He plays, he plays uh, Damon in the new uh, Game of Thrones show, uh, House of the Dragon. He's awesome. Oh, I mean, watching him in, in House of the Dragon makes me want to watch Doctor Who. But then I'm just like, eh. Well, everyone that's a Doctor Who fan likes him as a doctor. So I don't know of a single person who has a middle ground stance on Doctor Who. It, you're a fanatic about it, or you're a normie who doesn't like it. I'm a normie who doesn't like it. Okay, yeah, I'll admit, I didn't like it from what yeah, I saw. Yeah, so, I mean, have you seen Doctor Who, Taylor? I've seen a couple of seasons, and just, I was... I, you know, I didn't love it, but I wasn't like. You weren't. Yeah, it was. It was okay. It was okay. Okay. There was a reason I didn't watch them all. <laughs> so, Cody, you say Doctor. You say uh, Dune. I am. Dune is my number one. I am so excited for that as well. I, I really am. That's a. If we're gonna say number ones, that's a hard one for me not to be like super excited about. But I think the one I'm most excited for is Oppenheimer because. Yep. It's an isolated story. It's, it's a Christopher Nolan movie. It's a Christopher Nolan movie. He hits every time. It's got Killian Murphy in it. I love that guy. Especially with Peaky Blinders. Since I watched The Boys, I kind of became a fan. The Boys. I became a fan of Jack Quaid. He plays, uh... Oh, what the fuck is the uh, kid's name in The Boys? Uh, there's, um... The kid's name in The Boys? It's, um... We'll Google it. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're so fast. Why don't you go- no, the boys. So it's um, oh, brain. Uh, this is hard because I know that the... Uh... <laughs> Damn. But anyway, he's, so really hard? Good. he's really good in the boys, and I'm glad that he's uh, getting into more mainstream roles. Yeah. Anytime I see him, I'm like, fuck yeah. What about you, Taylor? Are you looking forward to anything I'm in 2023? I'm a big as fan of his um, I haven't been keeping a close eye on what's really come out. I, I'm more of a... Oh, this is what came out this week. I'm like, oh, sure, let's let's go to that. <laughs> I gotcha. Let me see if uh, I can find the movie, the release calendar for this. He year. was in the Hunger Games. Okay. So, I am excited for that Guardians of the Galaxy three, though. That I think that will be good. Okay, so January is a freaking dud. Is there anything in here in January that you guys are looking at? I see plain Gerard Butler. I like Gerard Butler. Why can't he make a good film anymore? <laughs> I don't know. I want to see uh, Greenland that he was in. I haven't seen that. Um, Palace Party, I might see. Is that like a a comedy? Yeah, it's one of those... uh, What's a good way of putting it? (laughs) Dumb comedies? Sure. Okay. Uh, (laughs) I'll say it's like that. January... Man, Huey. there is. He plays Huey in the Boys. Huey, okay, I gosh. Huey oh gosh. and the Boys. Well, okay. That sounds like a band from the '60s. It sure does. That's what I thought you were talking about. <laughs> I'm just gonna throw this out there. There's a Sword Art Online movie coming out. Don't care. Title sucked. Progressive. Really fun. That's <laughs> fun. Really good, socially aware t- title for your movie these that days. Sounds progressive. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, so in, going into February, we got Magic Mike. That's the first movie people will we'll be, be going there. To. Fuck yeah! Can't wait. Party bus um, boys. That's a uh, <laughs> Valentine weekend, too. Yeah. So that's, of course it is. That sucks. That's gonna be uh, <laughs> a lonely weekend. Ant Man, don't care about. Ant Man, I do not care about. I haven't about. seen any of his movies. I've seen the first one. It was it was good. I didn't see the second one, but I might see Cocaine Bear. It'd be cool I'll probably see. go watch Cocaine Bear. Yeah. Cocaine Bear we need be- Cocaine Bear to come out so then we can have a couple beers and watch Cocaine Bear at home. <laughs> the- I bet that would be a real good movie yeah. to watch with a couple drinks. <laughs> You'll be cheering for the bear the whole time. 
Creed three looks really good. I haven't seen any of them. The, well, I haven't seen I haven't seen them either. But the, have you seen the trailer for Creed three? Yeah, it was on. Yeah, the Avatar. It was the tra- trailer there. I think well, the looks, first time I went. There, uh, right? Not when I went. <laughs> there were <was Yeah>, zero <laughs> trailers. <laughs> Michael B. Jordan is another looks, actor I think is going to carry yeah, Hollywood into the future. I think Michael B. Jordan is a talent, and he is awesome, and he's he's got great movies under his belt. I think he's going to be carrying movies into the future for sure for a long time coming. Yeah, I like him. Uh, Creed 3 is one I'm excited for. Let's see. Scream 6. No, thank you. There's a Willem Dafoe movie. You guys... Heard of Inside? I haven't heard of this. No, I mean, it's independent. He's got a couple really good independent movies. Uh, Did you ever see uh, The Northman? I bought it, um, but I haven't watched it yet. It's in my cabinet uh, to watch on 4K disc. I, really I might watch that this afternoon. Um, there's a few more topics I really wanted to get to today. Um, let's talk about Warhammer. Well, we don't know a lot about it. <laughs> Taylor knows about Warhammer. I know a very little amount about 40K. Well, what do you guys... Um, I mean, what do you think Henry will... Like, I think Henry, what do you think his show will look like? It's an Amazon... So let me let me preface this a little bit first. Set the stage. This is for people who aren't paying attention to pop culture right now. Henry Cavill is announced he's going to start his own project partnered with Amazon Prime, uh, and it's going to be a show on Amazon Prime is what his target is. He's going to produce it. Um... He's I'm, in charge of it. He's, he's a showrunner. Sh- he's the showrunner. He's in charge of it. Henry Cavill is known for having a deep, deep passion for the Warhammer universe and the Warhammer 40K universe. That's I think I think most people who have paid who have a cursory knowledge of this guy understand he's very deep into that culture. He gives a shit about the lore. Yeah. About anything that he's on. He's a big fan of The Witcher, and he left because he was not. Uh, the writers and the showrunners didn't really give a shit about the lore. So he's like, yeah, screw it, I'm out. So I'm pulling up the for- the Warhammer 40k homepage um, for Warhammer, and I'm just looking at this. I don't understand what this is supposed to look like as a show. That's my one thing with it, is I don't understand. You follow around like, uh, some space marines or whatnot, but... I don't know. Like the main, There's the so, main heroes are the like quote unquote space marines are like yeah, it's the face of the brand. basically of the franchise. So if he's gonna be do anything with it, that's who it's gonna follow because they're the they're the face of it. He could play the emperor. He um, just sits in a throne for. <laughs> so you know, it's it's what it is is basically the space marines are the Spartans of the Halo universe. They're taken yeah, as kids, genetically engineered to more extreme than even Spartans are. And then... Yeah, because 40K is a very dark, dark Very, universe. yeah. And, it's, and I <clears throat> love it. There's I, lots of races that are just basically trying to wipe out humanity and then... It's basically an ongoing um, genocide for thousands of years. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah. Well, and that's, that's my thing. Is like, is it going to have... I, I do I hope how much. dark he's going to make it, though. I hope very dark. I hope so, too. I, I hope it just stays true, which with Henry, probably will. Well, the people who want to watch Warhammer mo- a Warhammer show will want that. For sure, because they're going to expect that, because <clears throat> no one's going to be like, oh, what's this? Let's just put it on the background and not pay attention. It's going to be... Turn 40K into, like, a Marvel movie where it's just quips every two seconds. Yeah. (laughs) Well, here's my thought. Here's what I know about the Warhammer universe is that the Warhammer 40K story is ridiculously long. It's, like, has a canon that's thousands and thousands of years. Oh, 40,000 to be precise. Well, to be exact, 40,000. And it's been a few years since it came out, so we'll round up a little bit. 40,000 and change. But, um... Where... How could you tell a story in this universe that would matter? Well, I mean, you could just... You could pretty much set it around any time. Well, I mean, a lot was going on for, like... Because the Emperor doesn't show up really until, like, 30,000 years into it. Yeah. And then he rules for the next 10. But, yeah, I don't know. There's so much lore, and the universe is so big that you could pretty much do anything with it. And, like, you could have a different... Each season, could it could be, like, an anthology series, almost. That would be cool. Actually, I would get behind that. And I would almost prefer an anthology. Just tell a bunch of different stories. That would be cool. There are, there are things that have succeeded on that basis. I mean, we... You, Cody and I have seen uh, Love, Death, and Robots. I think, Taylor, you said you had a seen an episode episodes, or two. Yep. That's what's great about Love, Death, and Robots. I mean, they're micro, they're micro episodes. I mean, they're small as heck, but, I mean... Every one of them individually is so great. 
I just I hope it's an anthology. That would actually make a lot of sense. I do me. season by season anthology. Yeah. Follow around certain characters for one season, <clears throat> just so you can get to know them and stuff. So it's not just like one hour. Yeah, you care a little bit story. more about them. Another uh, another topic I wanted to get into was um, anime, but uh, we can talk about that a little uh, different date if we want to. We should probably do it at a different date. Okay. Um, what I, other uh, movies are coming out this year? Oh, yeah. I didn't even finish the list. I only got to yeah, March. In March. 65 could be cool. What is that about? I, I'm not Adam even Driver, sure. Like, yeah. Oh, I know this one. Adam Driver, some sci-fi movie. I was, I was watching this trailer. Let me take you through this. I was watching... The, let's watch... Let's this does look trailer. good. Let's react to the trailer a little bit. Actually, I don't know... If There's something alien in there. What's that? Oh, yeah. I'll keep it. There. Um, but let's watch the trailer. Sam Raimi? Sam Raimi. Where do you see that? I just said it. Isn't he directing it? Scott Beck and oh, Ryan no. Woods. Okay, I'm losing my mind. But um, this looks awesome to me. This looks so good. My issue with it was that you didn't need dinosaurs. You didn't need it. Oh, I just noticed that in the back of the poster. And, oh, yeah. This movie is, you go back 65 million years to when there's dinosaurs, and it's future versus past, and... I'm so mad at this because I was watching this trailer and I was getting so hyped about a guy stranded on an alien planet trying to survive and trying to overcome it, and he went to the fucking past? It's basically like After Earth then with Will Smith. Yeah. Except for in the future, it's in the past. I didn't like After Earth. Like, no, that sucked ass. It's like, I want, I want to start seeing some movies that succeed. I was like, why do people want to see a future against dinosaurs? I don't know, people think dinosaurs are cool still. <laughs> oh, producers. Produced it. Sam Raimi produced it. Okay, that makes sense. I just, it visually looks amazing. Adam Driver is a great actor. He's got his sidekick. I don't know why she's there, but... <laughs> you oh, of course, it's a little girl. It's always a little girl sidekick. Yeah, just to put him in danger and make the world harder on him and uh, life just gotta suck. But he's got, he's going up against dinosaurs. I don't fucking want it. Okay, I'm a little less excited about that now. Go back. What else can we look forward to? Okay, I, I'm sorry to disappoint. <laughs> Taylor, what do you I'll, think? I'll still watch it. For for some reason, I've only watched the trailer once. I didn't, I didn't think it was going back in time. I thought it was a human race. Prehistoric Earth. Went to prehistoric Earth. These these guys are quote unquote aliens, who came to Earth. What 65 million years ago. Mm. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's what I got out of it. I've only watched a trailer once, though. I, I see what you're saying. I Maybe there's some story. Well, okay. So these An are, astronaut lands on a mysterious planet only to discover he's not alone. That's the. That's what I got out of it, that this wasn't time travel. This was him, an alien, crash landed on Earth. The synopsis is vague, is vague as hell. 65 or million, million years ago, million. prehistoric Earth had a visitor. Uh, See? So, so, yeah, what if uh, humans are now native to Earth and he is an alien that landed here? Landed here. I hate that what this is doing cool. to my brain. That would be kind of cool. I hate what this is doing to my brain. Do you think they're right. a little girl? Huh? I want to see... Oh. I, oh. Here we go, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, let's go. I mean, <laughs> we're not... I don't care. Our, our, our freaking catchphrase on this podcast is going to be, we're not pro-child murder. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it'd be a lot cooler if it was. Because he said that in the last episode, too. We sure too. did. And we're two episodes deep, and we're one for one. We're two for two. We're two for child murder. What's that? Is that? We were talking about killing spiders. We were talking about killing spider. Right. <laughs> we're not for it. We're not for it, but... But we are two for two for it, so... All right. Uh, John Wick, yet. Chapter 4. I'll watch it. I'll watch it, too. Yeah, I'm, am I excited, excited about it? No. Keanu, move on to the other projects. Get Start a billion other things. I can't believe this is the fourth one already. Me neither. Dungeons & Dragons, among, Honor Among Thieves. It's going to suck. It's going to suck the whole time. I we need begging it. for we need this it. movie to work. <laughs> I want this movie to work so badly. It's going to be like Warcraft that came out. Oh, please, no. <laughs> oh, I know what movie you're talking about. Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, no. Even World of Warcraft. I mean, oh. you have these franchises that could just launch so well. Just you have huge right. franchises you could put on, and they don't have these superhero movies. Dungeons and Dragons is immense. They've published two new books this year. I'm like, there's so much content to touch on, and you can homebrew in the games, and there's so many amazing actors who have a, a, a foot in this franchise. Look how uh, mainstream they're trying to make it right away, though, with Chris Pine and Michelle Rodriguez. There, yeah. I want this movie 
to work so badly. All right, we're still in April. Let's keep going. Yeah, sorry, I'm moving slow. Uh, a walking miracle actually was something. I, I there's been some Christian movies like some. Richards is still alive. There's been some uh, some Christian movies, some like religious films that have been teased, and even like The Chosen. I mean, there's been some some movies that have come out that actually look like they're pretty good. And I don't know why I'm I'm. Maybe it's because I'm older, but I don't know why I'm actually starting to look at some of these uh, religious films and actually find a spark of interest in them now. Um, maybe that's my call. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, Taylor, you're, I mean, you kind of have a... Yeah, I mean, me and the fiancé have watched The the Chosen pretty pretty often, and we've seen it a couple times. We go to almost every one of those movies. I'm, I'm definitely going to go see that one. We just saw The Father Stew Excellent. Oh, with Mark Wahlberg. Excellent. I really wanted Very to see good. that as well. That was the, that was actually one of the first movies I was going to say as like kind of the thing that pulled me towards this was Father Stu. Actually, very good. And then, um, okay, but uh, I'll watch Stu. I'll watch Super Mario. I probably I will too. too. Um, I don't think Chris Pratt. Uh, shout out to Chris Pratt. I love you, man. I don't think this was your movie. I don't think super. Did you really I love want it. him sounding like the games though the entire movie? Yes. Let's go. <laughs> I love it. I, I want exactly. That. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> I want exactly that. I yep. want. I want Super Mario. I mean, like even the <laughs> voice actor. Okay. Yeah, because it, it just pops up and it's like, yo, it's me, Mario. Oh. <laughs> it does sound. Kind of It'd be weird. so jarring. Like, so, cuz it's Mario, Holmes. <laughs> Let's go. What if he talked like a. Uh, 1920s Italian gangster. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> you come to me. You come to me in your moment of need. I will kill this Bowser for you. <laughs> talking uh, one of the mushroom men he's talking to. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not recognizing any of these names. Uh, Renfield. Oh, Renfield is that new movie that just... Uh, so it's um, Nicolas Cage. Well, it's Nicholas a horror Holt. movie, yeah. It's, it's a comedy. Um, it's Dragon How did Bottle of Water get a role on this? What? Aquafina. Oh my god! I didn't even notice that. Aquafina is literally a single name. That's a beautiful thing to see. This is a drag. So Nicolas Cage plays Dracula in this film. Fantasy horror. Oh, I'm already in. <laughs> You're sold? I'm sold. I'm sold. All right. It's a comedy. Uh, Evil Dead Rise. Meh. I haven't watched any of the Evil Dead, and I need to because I know I like them. The Covenant? It's a thriller, crime. Oh, okay. It's so, got a couple good actors in it. Yeah, Emily, uh, em- Emily Beekman, uh, Jake Gyllenhaal. That I don't know. I mean, there's no cover for it, so I don't know what that's going to be about. But okay, maybe. We're still in April. We're only on month four. We're still in April. Okay, Guardians of the Galaxy three. We saw it, uh, or we talked about it. He's he killed in ecstasy. What? That sounds hot. There's uh, another Fast and Furious movie. I'm no! assuming that's what that is. How are you not surprised? How are you surprised? I just want it to die. Me too. I just want the franchise to die. Look at. It's all actresses. It's a girl movie. Oh, even worse. Keep yeah, I mean, going before I barf. Okay, May again. So there's a Mark Hamill. The oh, machine. that's Burt Kreischer's movie, The Machine. Mark Hamill's playing Burt. Mark Hamill plays his dad. Is Burt in this? Yeah. No, he's not in the. He should be in the. He, he went to like S- Serbia or some shit to film it for. There he is. Months. Okay, Burt's in it. Oh my. Albert Kreischer. He plays his dad. You're, this is the story? This no the story. way. I know what that is. That's going to be awesome to go to. I kind of want to see this. It's so do I. I. Okay, I'm, I'm in. I'm in for it. I know you're burnt out on Burt. Um, yeah, a little bit. But, but I mean, by then. <laughs> but by May. But in three months, four months, five months. I suck at counting. Uh, you got there. They don't even know what year it is. Spider-Man Across the Multiverse. Uh, I'm worried about it. I like the first one, but I'm worried about this. Okay. I like the first one a lot, too. I haven't seen the first one. Maybe Very I'll watch good. it right before I watch this in June. Don't, Don't care about Transformers. We need, to have a, we need to have a reconciliation. Peter Dinklage is in this? Like there wasn't already a height difference between humans and Transformers? <laughs> <laughs> Pete Davidson? Those last, three, those last three people I can't stand anymore. Peter yeah. Dinklage, Pete Davidson, and Ron Perlman. Yeah, this is going to be... Sounds like your kind of movie, then. I guess. We'll need to talk about this. Awesome. Flash comes out in June. I didn't realize that. Um, Elemental is a new animation film. Uh, Astrid City. Indiana Jones. <laughs> I think we are all out on Indiana Jones, right? Uh, and, um, no, I'm good. Ooh, okay, here we go. And Insidious 5 Project. Ooh, I'd There's been four that. of them? Yeah, yeah I like a few of them. They're pretty good. I like horror I movies, though. I think I've only seen one. I am... Patrick Josh Wilson's is directing it. 
Josh is in it. Rose is in it. Oh, spoiler alert. Half of them are going to die. So. In a horror movie? No way. <laughs> in an insidious <laughs> horror movie. I'm immediately out on this. Um, what? I'm immediately out. If it's not a James Wan uh, film, I'm not. Patrick Wilson, he's directing it. I know. That's why I'm like... He's I, good. I mean... I don't know if he's directed anything else. I guess he was in the, he was in the Watchmen. He was in... I mean, he's in stuff, but he's... He's in a lot of good shit. He's a voice in Teen Titans Go. Perfect, though. Wow. He's, he's just really... One episode. My mind has been changed. My mind has thoroughly changed. Game. I'm in, I guess. Never mind. Okay. Uh... Insidious 5, Mission, Mission Impossible, Impossible, hell yeah. I'm going to go see that. And honestly, I've not seen that many Mission Impossible films. So, I think I've seen all, all of them except for number two. I might take the week off to talk. We might take... We, Robert Downey Jr.'s in Oppenheimer? Did you see that? Dude, there's so many good actors. In it. It's uh, Matt Damon, insane Emily Blunt? Cast. Holy shit. I completely... I mean, I was already hyped about Oppenheimer, but I... I, I Wow, I'm stoked! Oh, on it what now. about the Marvels? Is everyone up for that? No. Oh. <laughs> oh no. Immediately out. Brie Brie Larson, I saw the first name. I'm good. Brie Larson, Samuel Jackson is someone I'm not interested in watching anymore either. I don't really care. The Meg too. Wow, they got sequel. They already. Yeah. First one just came out. Um. Seth Rogen out. Yeah. Uh, Gran Turismo, Last Voyager. I mean, August looks like it's gonna have some stuff in it. I don't know what Haunted Mansion I'm. Jared Leto's in it. Jamie Danny DeVito. Curtis. Jamie Lee Curtis. What the hell? Danny DeVito. Danny DeVito's the best. Orlando Bloom's in something again. Is that a remake? Orlando Bloom's in uh, Gran Turismo. What's Gran Turismo about it? There um, is well, a there's race? a game called Gran Turismo. I've never played it. It's just track racing. Well, if Orlando Bloom's in it, I'll wait until there's more trailer and more content out for it. But I, I like Orlando Bloom a lot. He's actually an actor I wish was in more things. But oh, they I actually agree. did make the Blue Beetle movie. Fuck! Yeah. D- DC. <laughs> uh, let's see. Equalizer 3. I like Denzel Washington in these movies. I, I thought this, uh, the first one was just like, what is going on? Yeah. I, I was not into it at all. It's like they were trying to make John Wick, but with. Oh my god! Fitty Cent! Expendables 4! Oh, fuck me. Let's go! Fitty Cent, baby. He's, yeah, let's go. 50 Cent's in it. Let's talk. look at the top build cast. Okay, Megan Fox, Fox yeah. let's go! <laughs> yeah. Okay, Tony Ja. He's good. Tony Ja, Dolph Lundgren, uh, other people. I could not. Sylvester Stallone. I am, okay. okay Bikini little... Girl, look at that. That's Ooh, her. There's Bikini Girl in this film? She's back. Wow. Great. She's back. <laughs> <laughs> to reprise her role. <laughs> Bikini <laughs> Girl. I like. Honestly, I would like to see 50 Cent. He's ancient now. I mean, he's an old. Yeah, he was. He played the Super Bowl like last year, and I'm like, who's that? Oh, hey, shit, he, he was a pretty big man. But honestly, Expendables 4 would be. But he's I, old, I would have so, fun I mean, watching this. I would go see that in theaters. I mean, the Expendables franchise is like. It's super just dumb. It's really dumb, <laughs> but honestly. You just go have fun with it kind of movie, you know? I okay. Uh, we're in October now, so there's Exorcist, Paw Patrol movie, great. Paw Patrol. Saw 10. Saw series Saw isn't done 10. yet. Saw 10. Dune 2 in November. I don't want to wait that fucking long. It's yeah, forever. Yeah, it's a long time. But Good luck. Zendaya, Zendaya's in it. Let's go. Yeah, same. Same cast. That, that just makes sense. It does. <laughs> that just makes sense. <laughs> no. What the fuck? No. What? what? No. The new Hunger Games movie? Why? Is there a new book? For what? I thought the story was done. Hold on. Well, there's money to grab. They don't need a book. Oh, I remember seeing this golden bird thing. The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. Is anyone else getting extreme Game of Thrones vibes off of this right <laughs> oh, now? Already, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Peter Dinklage in too as a star. Oh, my goodness. He's not going to have a very easy time in the, in the Hunger Games. Yeah, yeah prob- well, they're going to put him on stilts, probably. What, what is that mustache, mustache on Jason Schwartz? Perfect. <laughs> That's what that is. It's perfect. Isn't that guy in a lot of Wes Anderson films? I have no idea. Uh, okay. Oh, what's his... Is Snow's daughter taking over? Look at that. Tigris Snow. Grand ma'am. She just had to be different. Good to save grandma. I'm grand ma'am. I'm grand ma'am. <laughs> Cornelius. All right, let's finish this out. Come on. Oh, you broke the computer. I, I didn't break the computer. It's perfect. Exactly how it is. I don't know what Wish is. It's oh, a Disney it. film. Couldn't care. Uh, didn't ask. 
Plus Fuck them, them all, the story of heaven. <laughs> Fuck <laughs> them all, the story of heaven and hell, the making of a ballad. It's a biography. A ballet. Oh, a ballet. That's got to be a fucking weird movie. Wow. Maybe get drunk. Fuck all. them all. A Wonka movie? Okay. Timothy Shalom, man. It's, uh, I know, like Timothy Shalom. Is it a origin story or what? I would think so. Because oh, Timothy, Timothy Shalom plays Wonka. Oh. I would assume. There's a Gremlins. Co- Gremlins is a comedy? Oh, hell yeah. Were the original Gremlins comedies? I thought they were just like. Yeah, they're goofy. Goofy, yeah. Uh, Paul Rudd is in another Ghostbusters sequel that we didn't ask for. Didn't uh, want. Didn't the last one. Uh, then there's another Aquaman. What? I enjoyed the first one. The first Aquaman? Mm-hmm. I did too. Um, I think I had the same issue with the original Aquaman that I had with uh, Avatar. And I'm pretty uh, sure this one was done shooting like two years ago. But the Amber Heard thing is really Yeah. Cool. Is she in this ex- now? I don't know. Probably. I'm not saying she is. She isn't. She is. She isn't. Well, she in the top of the cast, and gotcha. yeah, yeah, yeah there she is. Either she's there, yeah, or they haven't updated the oh, yeah. IMDb ah. posting. Go back down the cast. All right. Um, Mr. Affleck. Who's gonna be the bad guy again, then? Uh, King. Oh, is that the? I think David Kane King. will probably pay, play oh, uh, Manta. Yeah, Black Manta, whatever. King Nerus. Is Dolph Lundgren? Dolph has been in some stuff lately. Um. All right. Let's, well, yeah, it's probably time to wrap it up. Yeah, let's see what. Let's just. That's the everything going up to December or Christmas of next year. So that takes us one year out. So, so there's not a whole lot that I. Oh, I'm, I'm sure a lot more this, is going to get added, but this is going to be a dry year for movies. But I wonder if TV shows are going to pick up the slack where that leads off. I guess. Um, so we'll wrap it up the same way we did as last time. I guess Taylor, final thoughts on anything we've talked about today? Um, no, I'm just excited for a couple. Of Good movies coming out, and they'll just hopefully they don't disappoint. So, yeah, we'll see. I'm not optimistic, but <laughs> Oppenheimer is one I'm very excited. I for. I am excited for that one as well. Uh, Cody, well, I won't say I'm excited for anything, but there's things I look forward to. <laughs> yeah, set your expectations low, and hopefully they. Uh, I haven't been excited about them. anything since I was 12 years old. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I guess uh, my final thoughts on today, we're looking at a year of a pretty dry roster of films coming out. I am optimistic about seeing some of these actors break away from the Marvel, and I think I'm more excited for any announcements that will be coming out. I'm guessing we're going to have a year full of good announcements, but mediocre films. Maybe. Um, We'll wrap it up there. No, okay, I will say I am excited for Fuck Them All. Yeah? Yeah. (laughs) The ballad of uh, making of the ballet. The story of heaven and hell. Wow. Uh, Wow. So excited. Right. <laughs> we'll wrap it up there. Thank you guys for listening, joining us. Uh, if you've made it this far, follow us on Rumble, YouTube. Uh, hit the plus button or the like button, whatever one is on Rumble or YouTube that you're watching. And check us out on Instagram. And we will see you guys on the next one. Peace. Peace. Fuck them kids. Catch me on the gram. How about that?